good evening everyone welcome back to the channel in this video i will be discussing language planning and its types with some previous year questions based on the same topic so let's get started so language planning is uh, uh, also known as language engineering and language treatment uh, firstly that uh, you should know about language planning is that it's a very deliberate and a systematic effort and uh, it is uh, done basically to solve the communication problems of a community uh, if you we will go by the definition you see this definition has two different parts so first is a deliberate systematic and theory based attempt to solve the communication problems of a community studying its various language and dialects the second part deals with it developing in developing that language as an official language policy concerning their selection and use now the first part of the definition uh, deals with the corpus planning of the language while the second part of the definition deals with the status planning uh, although this uh, distinction between corpus planning and status planning was given by hans claus in 1969 Now let's talk about corpus planning and status planning one by one. Corpus planning is basically which deals with the corpus or the body of the language. Uh, for example, the way language norms are chosen and codified. Uh, it deals with how a spelling system is re, uh, reformed, how campaigns for plain or non-sexist languages are launched, and literacy programs are introduced. Uh, the main functions of corpus planning is basically of coining new words reforming spellings and adopting a new scripts we can also uh, say that it uh, basically refers to the creation of new forms or creation of new words while modifying the older ones as well the selection from alternative forms in a spoken or written code as said by cooper in 1989 uh it also uh, is an effort to change the body or corpus of a language corpus planning also attempts to define or reform the standard language by changing its uh, vocabulary pronunciation spelling and grammar so we can say it includes orthography planning which involves both the creation and reform of alphabets syllables and ideographic writing systems there are different parts of language planning or types of sorry corpus planning as well so there are three types of corpus planning first is graphization standardization and modernization so talking about graphization first it refers to the development selection and modification of scripts and orthographic conventions of a language so here the script is developed and it is selected then it is modified then the second step is based on the standardization of a language means choosing that script as the standard language so one variety of a language uh, here takes precedence over the other social and regional dialects of a language so we make one variety as a standard variety now the third step or a type of corpus planning is modernization in which expansion of lexicon happens and uh, the development of uh, vocabulary happens it occurs when a language needs to expend its resources to meet functions so it is known as modernization now let's look at the status planning so after the body of the language is established we come to the status planning of the language and that is more concerned with the social and political implications of choosing that language and uh, it uh, then uh, there comes the language attitudes national identity and international use and minority rights status planning again has several dimensions as said by cooper it has been linked to official recognition which national governments attach to various languages especially in the case of minority languages and to authoritative attempts to extend or restrict language use in various contexts status planning issues also includes so for example designation of the language of instruction in schools and decisions regarding whether and in which languages bilingual ballots may be used so in these cases status planning concerns the relationship between languages rather than changes within them 
then we have four phases of language planning and these phases were given by Hegan uh, so these are very important and uh, uh, also the name of the uh, model that is Hegan's model which has four phases of, of language planning please remember the sequence of these phases so the first is selection then we have codification implementation and then elaboration so in these four phases language planning takes place according to Hegan So let's describe these in the different uh, processes of language planning. When we talk about processes of language planning, there are five processes of language planning. Uh, if you will notice the order of uh, the two uh, phases of, in, of language planning and uh, the order of the here, the two processes of language planning are reversed. Uh, let's see that so the phases the uh, remember the sequence of the phases as well as the sequence of five processes of language planning so first process uh, process of language planning is the selection that is choosing the language as an official language selection of the language then second function or second process is the codification in which we codify the language by giving it a basic grammar uh, dictionaries are written in that language and written models are also given so that it becomes a standard then uh, there uh, comes the elaboration process in the elaboration process the standard variety which uh, being developed for use in all aspects of social life and the appearance of a body of a literary work written in the standard so we have elaborated the use of the standard uh, language or the language which we have selected and codified now comes the work of the government in the process for that is implementation here a uh, government basically attempts to encourage use of the standard variety then the final process is of acceptance means acceptance by the public acceptance of that language by the public so when a substantial majority of the population have come to use the standard and then they start thinking it as the national language playing a part of it not only social but also in national identity so uh, these are the five different processes of language planning uh, re uh, remember the sequence of them selection codification elaboration implementation and then acceptance moving on further to the ideologies of the language planning there are four ideologies of the language planning so the first ideology is the internalization that is adoption of non-indigenous language as a means of wider communication as an official language means that language which is non-indigenous is internalized into our culture then we have linguistic assimilation means every member should learn and use the dominant language of the society in which they live so it becomes linguistically assimilated society then the third la uh, language ideology is lang linguistic pluralism which is basically recognizing and supporting the coexisting languages within a single society and the last is vernacularization which is basically restoration and development of an indigenous language along with its adoption by the state as an official language now let's look at some of the previous year questions based on this topic so the first question is which of the following best describes the planning process that changes the function variety and user rights so the language which talks about function variety and user rights or sorry the planning which talks about function variety and user rights is status planning which is option number two the second question is based on assertion so assertion one says language planning is deliberate systematic and a theory based attempt under government patronage to solve communication problems of a community or a nation Assertion 2 says it consists of status planning and corpus planning. So if you will see both the assertions are correct. The first is the definition of language planning while the assertion second talks about the types of language planning. Hence option 1 is the correct answer that is both first and second are true. 
then we have choose the correct sequence of stages in the establishment of a standard language now they are asking you to sequence the stages of language planning so first if you will notice we select the language then we codify the language then elaboration func uh, function comes into focus then we implement the language so d c a b is the correct sequence hence option d is the correct answer then we have language planning is not related to the planning of so option a is status planning b corpus planning c is standardization of script then d is language acquisition so not related to so language planning is not related to language acquisition next is the process of standardization of language does not involve one of the following remember it does not involve one of the following so it involves codification of form as you know it involves with the elaboration of function it also involves with the selection of the language but it does not involve word order hence option c is the correct answer the next question is what kind of planning is directly involved in the modernization of language so if you remember we talked in this video that in modernization what happens that we uh, there is a coining of new words and there is a adaptation as well of of the vocabulary so it all involves uh, basically it uh, is all part of the corpus planning so option 3 is the correct answer the next question is which of the following are aspects of corpus planning so these are the different options here development of a writing system promotion of an official language relativization of heritage language creation of new words promotion as a national language if you will see all the first four are aspects of corpus planning only option e which is based on the promotion as a national language is it is a part of status planning hence option 1 is the correct answer moving to uh, on to our last previous year question it is basically asking you which of the following is not true for language determination if you will read all of these you will find that language determination has nothing to do with sapir so option 1 uh, cannot be there while rest of them are true for language determination that is second third and fourth so language determination describes that aspect of language planning which is concerned with the allocation of languages or language varieties to specific specific functions in a given society then language determinism also concerned with matters such as choice of an official language medium of instruction regulation of language use in courts etc a uh, hence clause said that this uh, language determination is a part of language planning and in language planning it is a part of status planning that's all about language planning and its types um thank you so much i hope you will be benefited from this video